The muscles of the human limb are divided into sections or compartments formed by strong fascial membranes. Rapid increases in pressures within a compartment can compromise circulation and function of the tissues within that space, leading to compartment syndrome, which is often the result of trauma and is a surgical emergency. Acute compartment syndrome most often develops soon after significant trauma, typically within hours after the traumatic event, where long bone fractures account for approximately 75% of cases, with the tibia in the lower extremity being the bone most often involved, and the bones of the forearm being a close runner-up. Although fractures represent a majority of cases of compartment syndrome, it can occur after minor trauma or non-traumatic causes, such as in severe thermal burns, constrictive bandages, splints or casts, high pressure injection injuries, arterial vascular injuries, animal bites and stings. As mentioned earlier, compartment syndrome occurs when there is an increase in pressure within a compartment, leading to cellular anoxia due to local ischemia with common areas being the compartments of the arms and legs. The lower leg is divided into four compartments. The thigh has three compartments. The forearm also has three compartments. And the upper arm is divided into two compartments. They are nested. Remember that these compartments are closed spaces, with limited room for expansion. If one of these compartments were to fill up with, let's say blood, from a vascular injury, they may expand slightly, but eventually, expansion can only go so far until it's contained within this closed space, and pressures increase to the point that it limits the blood flow to this extremity, leading to tissue death. Yara! Where's the other apostate? Clip her wings. In this scene, our character likely suffers from a fracture to one of the long bones of her forearm, leading to eventual compartment syndrome to one of the compartments of her upper extremity over time. This increase in pressure and ischemia to the underlying tissue is thought to begin once local blood flow, which is restricted by a rise in compartment pressure, fails to meet the metabolic demands of local tissue. classic finding of compartment syndrome are referred to as the five P's, which are pain, pallor, pulselessness, paresthesias, and poikilothermia, or cold skin. However, only pain has been shown to be commonly associated with compartment syndrome, while the others, although they could be present in cases of acute compartment syndrome, are not always present, particularly in its early stages, and have been shown to correlate poorly in regards to its sensitivity and specificity for compartment syndrome. Many clinicians will agree that the diagnosis of compartment syndrome is primarily a clinical diagnosis, with the measurement of compartment pressures used as supporting evidence. When the patient presents with pain and swelling to the forearm after a crush injury with tense compartments on physical exam, you'd be hard pressed not to think about compartment syndrome. Measuring compartment pressures may be helpful, but in this case, and in the right clinical scenario, obtaining compartment pressures is not required. But I wouldn't dismiss compartment pressures completely. These measurements can support the diagnosis and make your case for compartment syndrome even more convincing. But we'll leave these details for another video. For now, just remember that normal compartment pressures fall between 0 to 8 millimeters of mercury, with higher pressures translating to more damaged tissue.
Immediate management of suspected compartment syndrome includes relieving all external pressures on the compartment. This means any dressing, splint, cast, or other restrictive covering should be removed. Or fasciotomy, to fully decompress all compartments, is the definitive treatment in most cases. Delays in performing a fasciotomy increase morbidity, and as time continues to pass without relieving the pressure within a compartment, the more tissue and muscles begin to die. An amputation of the entire extremity may be necessary. And that wraps it up. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, and if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell to stay up to date when we post more videos like this one. Watch your backs.